Romans 10, brothers and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. Paul is praying for Israelites, the Jewish people to be saved. Do you realize that some, how many Jewish people in America, they have not heard the gospel of Jesus Christ for salvation by grace, by faith in Christ and Christ alone, instead of trying to establish their own righteousness. See, this is the thing, look around me. This is, <laughs> majority are the Jewish population here. Okay, so they got a nice areas, etc. Um, so, Romans 10 says, For I can testify about them, they are, they are zealous for God, but their zeal is not based on knowledge. How important is knowledge? How important is the mind? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Any Christians, anyone trying to bypass the mind or minimize mind, is asking for trouble. This is exactly what Paul is writing about. The zeal of a person means nothing if it is not based on the right knowledge. He's quoting about, Paul said he can testify about the Jews who were zealous for God. The Jewish people were zealous for God, but the zeal was not based on knowledge. Why? Since they do not know, since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. It's all about submitting to God's way or your way. <laughs> you know, if you want to try to establish your own way, go ahead. It'll be destruction. Because if you don't submit to God's way, you know, it'll be a problem. Because, because from in the context of what Paul is saying in Romans 10, is the Jewish people are stuck in the Torah, the Mosaic law, though not realizing not realizing that verse 4 says Christ is a culmination of the law or ESV said the end of the law the culmination of the law so that they may be there may be righteousness for everyone who believes that means all the Torah all the Mosaic law is culminated or fulfilled in the person Jesus Christ believe it or not <laughs> there is a foundational stone of Christianity you know, people get stumbled because they do not know Christ. You see, knowledge is everything. If you don't know, how do you get zealous on the right thing? If you don't know this is the right way, you keep going on. You may be zealous, but zealous on the wrong way. Zealous for God is a good thing. But zealous on the wrong way is a bad thing. Just like Paul. Before his conversion, he was zealous for God, so zealous, you know. Look at him, he was all the way zealous, trying to prove obedience of the law, faultless, blameless. He was on fire, but for the wrong things. Now, this is a little bit of verse 8 here. This is very interesting, verse 8, okay. Okay, so it says here that, the word that from the word of Christ is what saved you. So this, let me just unpack here. Moses write this about the righteousness by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. If you live by the law of Moses, you will read. You, you, you will live for eternity, but you can't. You always break it. You just broke it this morning. <laughs> if you're honest with yourself, how many times do you have to break it? See? Um, the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. Now this is incredibly interesting. You know, one is you trying to obey the law. You, you're doomed because you are not good enough. No one is good enough. But, but this is very interesting. Uh, verse, verse, uh, by faith's way of getting right with God says, don't stay, don't say in your heart who will go up to heaven to bring Christ down to earth. And don't say who will go down to the place of the dead to bring Christ back to life again. In fact, it says the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message about faith that we preach. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you are a Christian, you are born again. See, 
The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. The message concerning faith. That was, if you declare with the mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Two things need to happen. One is the heart belief. Second thing is the mouth confess. The confession of the mouth must be based on the conviction of the heart. Amen. You can't just confess flippantly without believing in the heart. You got to act it out. You got to really believe, genuinely, authentically believe that Christ did the works that you can do and you are saved. And then you express it by confessing you are saved. That is how a person is saved. You declare with the mouth, Jesus is Lord. Confess with the mouth, with the mouth Jesus is Lord. And God raised him from the dead. Let's see, I, 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 let me see the ESV. Um, okay, said, if you confess with the mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in the heart, God raised from the dead, you will be saved. Confess is a better word. If you confess, Jesus is Lord. Uh, if you confess with the mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in the heart, God raised him from the dead. Why is God raised him from the dead so important? Because that is the very reason that you don't have to follow the Mosaic laws by your own effort because you can't. So Jesus followed that Mosaic law to the perfection. And then he took your place, being judged by God, condemned by God, on your behalf, on my behalf, that we, the only way for us to be justified by God, justified before God, by the, is by the blood of Christ. It's because he died on our behalf, you see. So this is the main thing, how a person gets saved. Let me just expound on that a little bit. It says, how can you, you know, how can they be saved? For with the heart, one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses is saved for the scripture says everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame okay for everyone uh, who calls on his name will be saved now there's so much you can extend it to other things like it's either God's ways or your ways actually if you want to do your own things if you want to find a way to fulfill your ambition your calling you feel whatever way that God has called you. You know, like like what I'm going through. If I try my own ways, you see this always a tension between you, you trying to find out and trying to wait upon God. The point is, when do you know God provides his ways? Actually, when it happens, you will really know, right? Because half of the time, we don't hear audible voice. Well, most of the times. But we do feel a sense in our heart, God's direction and leading, you know, as we see doors opened, as we see doors closed, circumstantially lining up, feeling the leading by the Spirit. The Bible says, be led by the Holy Spirit, capital S, Spirit, be led by the Spirit. That's God's ways. You know, that there should be another talk, another day. How do you be led by the Holy Spirit? Walk by the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Paul wrote a very powerful epistle uh, on walking in the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. Which is hardly talked about these days among the reform circles. But it's really important that we are led by the Holy Spirit. And what does it look like, people may ask. And I, I like to ask too. Be led by the Spirit. You know, I believe when you are walking in the Spirit, you can be patient. And things don't show up, don't open up, you be patient. You can be patient. Because you walk in the Spirit. No point to rush into to make things happen on your own strength, but but rather should wait for God's ways, like Abraham and uh, Sarah. You know, Sarah can't wait anymore, so give uh, her maid to Abraham to to sleep with, and he slept with her to produce an offspring and a son called Ishmael, giving a lot of headache to the couple. But nevertheless, God bless Ishmael in a in in a certain way. But you see, the point is, Ishmael is not the promised son. Isaac is the promised son. You see, Ishmael is man's ways. Do your own things. 
But Isaac is God's ways for Abraham and Sarah.